Hello and welcome to the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Charner and we're going to talk about the wonderful lands, the public lands that are owned by the DCR along the Charles River. And there is a great new park along the Charles in Cambridge, North Point Park. And I have with me here Dane Tullock. Welcome. Thank you. Dane Tullock came up with a wonderful idea. He is the special outreach coordinator for REI. And he had the idea, let's have a camp cookout in the North Point Park. So we're going to take you to North Point Park and we're gonna show you pictures of this wonderful event. And you're gonna tell a little bit what REI does. Certainly. REI has partnered with the Charles River Conservancy on many occasions um, in terms of our volunteer events. You might be aware that the Charles River Conservancy has some 2,000 landscape volunteers every year who do brush cutting, tree pruning, bulb planting, bench painting, railings. Um, so you might have seen our truck, our volunteers along the parklands, or you might be interested in doing it yourself. But um, we are going to take you to North Point Park. And uh, first I will lead you there on the map here we have Cambridge on the northern side of the Charles and if you go along the river and you come to the Museum of Science the Craigie Bridge you go underneath the Green Line viaduct and you come to North Point Park a brand new park and here we have a plan again the Museum of Science to the left you go underneath the Green Line viaduct and you come into this amazing new park which was built with 70 million of big dig mitigation funds and that's where this event took place and in fact it was the very first event ever um, took place in that event because DCR who owns the park wanted to make sure that the grass is well established and that the park is ready and you might have read about this bridge that leads from North Point Park over the railroad track to Charlestown to the Revere Park or you might have heard about the skate park that the Conservancy is building here and EF is expanding here so a lot of exciting things are happening here but let's go back to, to Dane so Dane, you came up with this idea. Well, How did you come <clears throat> up with this idea? To be fair, this is an event that we have hosted in the Hingham South Shore area for about the past two and a half years. Excuse me. <clears throat> so basically, the REI Summer Camping Festival and Camp Cooking Challenge, this was the third annual event. And so this year, we really wanted to expand on the idea. We wanted to bring it to Boston so that the folks uh, closer to the, the central of the Boston metro area could get an experience and kind of join us for this type of event. It's all part of our family adventure program at REI. So basically every summer we work very hard to encourage families to get outside at least one day, one weekend over the summer, camp outside. And the Camp Cooking Challenge is to take the idea of cooking outdoors, which can be a little bit intimidating to some families, and make it a little bit more accessible. Uh, in this case, what we did was we invited some very high-end, well-known chefs from the Cambridge good, and Boston good. area. And we'll, we'll see them here. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically what we wanted to do is give people a little creative uh, inspiration to take their camp cooking past s'mores and hot dogs. Yeah, well, you surely did that to a very amazing level. So um, in, in, terms of, um, in terms of the event, um, it was really a partnership with the people who own the parklands, the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Um, Conrad Crawford was instrumental in um, helping that. Then the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. Uh, very important when you cook to have good local produce. Yes, ma'am. And REI, who brought the cooking equipment and the Charles River Conservancy. And, and we um, helped to, to put that all together. So let's look at some of um, pictures of the amazing park, uh, which is North Point Park. Um, it's now very lush. Um, 
this wonderful specimen there and we see the existing EF building and the regatta or the museum tower in the back. It's a park that is still little known by people even in Cambridge but well worth exploring. There are these little canals that have been cut into the park. We see the Zaken Bridge in the background and um, we are looking um, towards Charlestown. Um, wonderful pathways to stroll and that would then take you to the bridge to Charlestown. Um, and when you are on this little island you can look towards Boston. We see the jail and north the, the west end and of course every few minutes the Boston Duck Tours go by and the Nashua Street Park is on the other side. If you have small children there are two playgrounds and they have water features and it's a wonderful place right on the on the water's edge to take to take your children. So your idea was to make that an event for um, families to explore um, how to cook. Yes, definitely. So you gathered some, some chefs, but we also had some activities for the children. So there was, um, in addition to the playgrounds, there was um, knuckle bones, and it's knuckle bones. They, every Sunday, they are on the Charles River near the Weeks Bridge that bring um, games for all ages and so families came and played here is a slack line that um, attracted a lot of users and the parachute so this is all the games that were played here um, the various organizations here the conservancy had a, a, a tent and they had a scavenger hunt for families and the CRWA had a tent and a wonderful model that allowed um, children to see of how water um, um, goes through the earth into the river to really understand the impact of water. And here we have um, the tent of the food project. So they tell us of how, how you s plant that and who the, what the food project and the the local produce part was. Certainly. So we partnered with MDAR, which is the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. Rose over there was instrumental in helping us set up uh, our, some of our partnerships, including the food project. So uh, we partner on a regular weekly basis with MDAR. So what we do is we suggest places for people to go throughout the state to recreate. And then MDAR, the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources, has a statewide map where, of local places to secure produce, meats, locally produced foods. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so when people go out to recreate, whether they're hiking, camping, or whatnot, we want to give them options where they can uh, purchase and ultimately cook locally produced foods instead of once again getting fast food. You, you want a healthy uh, resource and a healthy option for the family. And also, once again, gives them a little bit more creativity and variability in what they can cook once they get out, either camping or, or yeah. hiking and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, and the idea here was to, to do that in the middle of the city so that um, you find um, healthy food in the middle of the city, you can do the cookout there. So that was a, a great idea to bring that right into the city and to offer that. And um, so um, here was the food stand of the Food Project, which is a wonderful organization that employs a lot of young people producing uh, food and then we come to this bucket here <laughs> so tell us tell us what the challenge was for the for the chefs so each chef if uh, so the cooking competition basically had one secret ingredient which we'll get to in a moment and then the food project provided a pantry so each chef had a 50 liter cooler that they could pack with whatever they wanted so they could bring whatever ingredients they wanting to use not knowing what that secret ingredient was and then once again the food project also provided a fresh produce pantry so that once they uh, learned what the secret ingredient was then they could choose some extra ingredients from that pantry if they so uh, desired then they had one hour to cook two entrees and then they, those entrees were tasted by our judges, who we'll get to in a moment as well. And basically, each dish was uh, judged on presentation, creativity, using the secret ingredient, and overall taste. Yeah. And in a way, that is where 
um, the goal of REI and the Conservancy and DCR come together. We want people to go and enjoy the outdoors, to do, to really have active, uh, good, active activities out there, eat healthy food. So in that sense, uh, this partnership was wonderful that we could bring the energy of all these groups together. Definitely. Um, we also had the help of HYM, which is a developer that is developing the North Point um, area uh, near the Gilmore Bridge, and they helped us with toilets and, and paying for knuckle bones and for the food project. So we had some local partners as well, and the Museum of Science yeah. had a table there they also. And they were doing a solar oven project, yeah. so kids could actually create solar ovens that they could actually cook with, which was really cool. Yeah, that was very popular. Yeah. Kids loved it. A very simple idea of, of how you with, with a pizza box and some tin foil, tin yeah. foil yeah. And, and plastic, you could actually cook marshmallows and, 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 and melt things yeah. very quickly. So that was that was wonderful to, to watch that um, be so so um, amazing that the kids didn't really expect that this yeah, was possible. Yeah, it was very popular. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let's go to the um, let's go to the area um, where. Um, the cooking took place. You, you were the master of ceremony <laughs> there, and you filmed everything, and introduced everybody. And here we are on this wonderful knoll of the on this green hill, overlooking the water, and um, the chefs are set up there. So tell us who the chefs were and what their challenges were. Well, we definitely, uh, with the help of Rose at MDAR, were so lucky to get the chefs that did uh, participate in, in the cook-off. This year we had Patricia Yeo, who uh, actually used to, uh, was an executive chef in Moxa, just a few doors down from where we're located right now. She has uh, since moved on and she's getting, uh, undergoing other projects, but she's currently featured on Bravo's Top Chef Masters this season, so you might want to check her out there. She's still in the running for that program. And then uh, we had the folks from Tavolo, which is um, in Dorchester, very well-known, uh, uh, well-respected Italian restaurant. And uh, we had uh, 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 Chef Chris Douglas from Tavolo and Nuno Alves was his sous chef. And then we also had the folks from uh, Grill 23 and Bar, which is over in the Back Bay, and that was Chef Jay Murray. Yes, and, and you had mentioned before that they were not only offered the fresh produce by the food project, but a secret ingredient. Correct. And we will now see what this secret ingredient is. So it was redfish, and um, this is a very underutilized fish that's caught in trawls locally here out of Mass Bay uh, in the North Atlantic, Northwestern Atlantic, I should say. And the folks at the Northwest Atlantic Marine Association, NAMA, were the ones that put us in touch with the folks who actually catch this fresh caught fish, and they, they were the ones that brought it to us. So we really want to thank them as well. Redfish is a very light-bodied fish. A lot of people aren't familiar with it because you don't see it in the supermarkets very frequently. But once again, it is caught a lot in trawls, and it's one of those fish that they're trying to utilize more, so they want folks to become more familiar with it. Very tasty fish. Very tasty. And here we, hmm. we see the kids helping with cutting this fish, which was um, quite a challenge because there was not that much table space, everything you brought really everything was camping equipment most definitely everything that was utilized was camping equipment these uh two children actually are the sons of uh, uh chef douglas um and uh they they were his sous chefs for the day but one of the challenges with a fish like this in terms of cooking is um that you have to clean it you have to scale it or you ha and you have to decide are you going to cook it whole are you going to fillet it and the different chefs that we had at the camp cook off approached that differently which was really neat to see but just as they had fresh fish that you could buy locally Mass Harbor and Mass Bay is a wonderful resource of fresh bluefish, fresh striper. So you can actually go out on the Harbor Islands, fish, and camp out on some of the Harbor Islands and do exactly the same thing that we were doing at the cook-off. Yeah. So that's part of the idea is to inspire people to do similar things with the local resources. Yeah. And then, of, then we, um, as, as the chefs were starting to, to cook, um, the various people came and it attracted quite a crowd of people who wanted to, to see the chefs because it's much more fun to, to see chefs cook in a park 
then on a television show. Much, yeah, I, you're I, right there. Uh, and, um, right there. This is Patricia Yeo, uh, once again on Top Chef Masters in Bravo this season. And she was actually sampling some of her food for the, uh, for the uh, uh, spectators. So that was really nice for some of the folks to get to sample. I mean, Patricia Yeo is, a, is just an immaculate chef. So to be able to just walk into the park and sample some of her food, it's a unique opportunity. Yeah, that was wonderful. And then um, tell us about the equipment here. We're not talking about... Um, fancy restaurant stoves we're really talking about camp equipment here most definitely so each chef had uh, two stoves they could use a two burner coleman stove which runs on liquid propane small canisters then they also had a rapid boil msr reactor stove the msr reactor stove is all about boiling water really quick so it's great for uh if you have freeze-dried foods like a lot of the camp foods that are available at, uh, at our store and other stores the reactor is great for that purpose as well yeah and and when you were commenting the cooking, the, the chefs had quite a few surprises because the, the water boiled so quickly. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, actually one of the chefs made risotto, which if you're familiar with risotto, it's not an easy uh, dish to make. It requires a lot of uh, attention to detail slow and one, cooking. slow cooking. <laughs> and he had to keep it boiled up, then he had to bring it down, boil it up, bring it down. Uh, so it, that was definitely a challenge. And that's one of the things I love about the camp cooking challenge concept is you take chefs who are used to being in, in really extravagant kitchens and a controlled environment, yeah, in a way. and you bring it all down to the basics of camp cooking. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and in a way, that's also in a way what truly a child was able to do. Uh, telling people that well, you yeah, just just try, and and um, and the first time that might be di difficult, and then it gets better, and you definitely inspired a lot of people there. Yes, go out and you can produce great food with camp equipment and local food, and in this case even in a, in a public park. So Most definitely, that, that yeah. was a wonderful way of putting that all together, and. Here we see we see the chef. Which chef was that? Uh, so this is Chris Douglas from uh, Bar Twenty. Uh, grill. Uh, let me try grill that again. 23? Grill Twenty Three in Bar, yeah. and he actually has a pesto sauce there that he brought. So they were allowed to bring some uh, pre-made uh, foods and sauces. Um, so he used a pesto sauce. He did two things with the fish. Uh, one was a, a Middle Eastern treatment, and the other was a more traditional Italian treatment. Yeah, yeah, and you see the. The water of the Charles right there and Nashua Street Park and the duck tours were going by. It was just such a, a wonderful location. And if you haven't um, explored this new park in East Cambridge, um, it's worth your while. And, and I, I do have to point out that's Jay Murray, actually. I apologize, that's not Chris Douglas. So that is Jay Murray from Grill 23 and Bar. All right. Yeah. Good. And then. Um, so they all produced um, two their two main courses. Yes, ma'am. And then how did that and then move on after that? So we had four judges. Uh, we had representatives from local food bloggers, uh, Chop Chop Magazine. We had uh, the um, the um, state food director on hand, the commissioner of food, um, and then we also had uh, the um, city of Boston's uh, food programmer and coordinator, and they all served as judges. They each tasted each of the dishes, and then the dishes, once again, were judged on taste, overall uh, creativity and use of the secret ingredient, and then presentation. And as you can see, we had some pretty, uh, pretty colorful camp cooking uh, dinnerware that they could use. Um, so they, it's not just about you know, plastic plates. We want to use things that are reusable, recyclable. So we didn't uh, want to use paper plates and you know, throw away plastic. So we used uh, items that can be washed and reused again. Um, so that that's one thing we want to encourage is sustainable use of the outdoors when you're camp cooking as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I think this, you know, food and cooking, but also thinking of the recycling and the sustainability. Yep. I think this is great to, to combine all these things um, because that is where children learn all these things when they go out camping with their parents definitely and you know if the parents pay attention to what they eat and, and how they prepare it and how they leave the site behind that there are some games incorporated all that is is part of of urban living sustainable living green living Most healthy definitely. living so that's it's wonderful that you integrate all these things into your into your program and one other thing we did do is we composted so all the non protein based food waste we took back and I actually utilize that in my home garden. So we wanted to emphasize every aspect of stewardship when it comes to outdoor cooking. Good. 
In case you just joined us, this is the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show, and we're talking about North Point Park and the event, the camp cookout event with REI in partnership with the DCR and the D Department of Agriculture. And you can see this show on YouTube um, in, a, in two days. And I hope you come and visit not only the parks, but also the Conservancy's YouTube about various programs. But now the chefs have now finished their work and the judges have finished their work. And now comes the, the big award ceremony. <laughs> So we actually had trophies produced and custom made for this uh, co competition. You can see on the right side of that picture as well, there's some more of the, uh, the plates that were used for plating. And on the left is fuel, the, uh, the two types of fuel that were used for the uh, camp stoves. Yep. And here are the, the chefs with their trophies. And uh, we're looking out again to the, the prison um, on Nashua Street and the river this glorious location it's really a this is a little bit of boston there although most of north point park is really in cambridge and it's now fully open for the public the really cool thing that i didn't know until uh developing this program was that half that island where we cooked half of it's in boston and half of it's in cambridge so that was really an interesting little piece of local history local geography that i wasn't aware yeah, of yeah. yeah and it was not always an island it was really the seawall yep. went around and those um, lagoons those canals were cut into um, that was part of the planning by dcr and it adds so much in terms of possibilities for kayaking canoeing stand up paddle boarding it's really a very attractive environment now for it is it's, for and it's, a, it's one of the best views in boston to be honest with you because you have the zakem bridge like you said you have the museum of science right there the river all the duck boats you can see um you know the garden everything is just right there it's really just a wonderful spot to, to not only have events like this but to take your family and just spend the day out on the grass enjoying the outdoors yeah and then there will be the skate park there yeah oh yeah and there's also going to be a restaurant ef is building a new headquarters right on the water that will have a large restaurant with a patio a restaurant on two floors so there will be many attractions there um, to enjoy and, Excellent. and there are four tea stops within walking distance so uh, go there or pick up a hubway bike hmm. and and bicycle there so um, we have a, a glorious picture that you took. I think you took it the morning of, yes, of the day. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Was, this is the Zaken Bridge is so elegant. And um, we are um, looking um, towards Charlestown. And there is now a bridge that goes over the railroad tracks under and ends under the Zaken Bridge. And the bridge is a beautiful bridge. And the underbelly of the bridge is just as beautiful. It's gorgeous. And yeah. um, so um, uh, it is really a special thing. I want to take a moment to talk a little bit of what REI does uh, when they don't do um, dramatic events like <laughs> Camp Cookout. You support a lot of organizations, including the Conservancy, who do stewardship programs. Yes, ma'am. So we have a full grants program this year. We're giving away one hundred. I'm sorry, one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars to various stewardship-based nonprofits. In this market alone, three point two million across the country. REI is a national country. I'm mean, sorry, national company. So we do have stores across the country. Um, obviously, the Charles River Conservancy is one of our grant recipients. Uh, organizations like the Friends of the Blue Hills the Appalachian Mountain Club, and several other organizations that really support stewardship or preservation of the outdoor spaces where our customers recreate. Yeah, and, and of course, um, being a volunteer means you do get to do things hands-on and you experience it. And the idea behind it is that once you are volunteering with one of these organizations, you then return to the parklands um, you look at the parklands in a different way, and you become a steward. I think oh, by that all is, means, that yeah. is That is uh, what, the way it works. And um, we have a picture here of, um, that was a cold <laughs> November day. This is a group of MIT students, and they were all raking leaves along the river. And you came out and, and handed, us, handed us a check, a symbolic check to the Conservancy. 
So we are very um, grateful um, for the support um, because it's only with donations from, from corporations like yours right. and from foundations that we can run a volunteer program that brings 2,000 people out to the parkland. So thank you very much. You're welcome. It's our pleasure to be able to support the Charles River Conservancy in your stewardship efforts along the Charles River. Uh, once again, that was actually a photo from our 2011, and you guys have also gotten a grant this year, correct? Yes. So yes. Uh, we're going to continue supporting uh, the Conservancy and the great work that you're doing along the Charles River. Well, I, um, Dane, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about what is coming up for REI. I hear you also working with the um, hops, um, hops on uh, hub on wheels. Hub yes, on the, wheels. The, uh, yes. The mayor's cycling celebration. So it's actually two days this year. On Saturday, they're going to have the mayor's cup, which is the criterium or the race around uh, government center. And then on Sunday is hub on wheels, where anybody can register and ride down Starro Drive on it's a bike. Close Starro Drive. Starro Drive is closed. closed. No, cars, no cars. Right. So that I you see. can actually drive a ride down Starro Drive safely, yeah. securely. There'll be bike techs all along Starro Drive in case something happens to your bike. And there will be escorts for safety as well. Yeah. And um, if you haven't tried out the new Hubway bikes mm, yeah. in Cambridge, they're all over Cambridge now. Uh, you probably have seen one of their stations. These bikes, you um, can pay by the hour or you can become a member and explore the parklands on, on your bike. So there are all these things coming together. I'm delighted you're supporting that event um, in, with, with the bicycles. It's going to be great. So I believe it's, it's the third weekend, September 22nd, 23rd, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Same weekend as Viversing. Yep. So there are a lot of good Lots things. Of so good during the day, do, yeah. you go and bike, and then in the evening, you go, come to Viversing at the Weeks Bridge. Well, um, I here is... Um, the website of REI and and you have your programs up there. Yes, ma'am. REI.com backslash Boston. Great. And um, now, um, if you have any uh, want to learn more about the conservancy, you will see the website. And I want to thank you, Dane, for coming today and for putting on this great event. Thank, thank you. you so much.